Hi guys, today I want to talk to you about how to use a serial dilution to interpret your ELISA results. So typically in ELISA, the serial dilution is done on a much smaller scale in teeny tiny microtubes, but I've made larger ones just so that we have something to see more visibly and compare to. So you start by making a serial dilution, and this is so that you have controls with known concentrations that you can use to compare your unknowns to. And you start with the most concentrated, and then you usually dilute 50% each time. So you can see the number values going down on my tubes, and you can see the color concentration decreasing. I started with an imaginary value of 1,000 nanograms per milliliter of whatever the antigen is. We're doing an antigen ELISA. But you have to look at what your initial value is and then calculate your own serial dilution. So for my students, these are not the actual values. I'm just giving you an example and you'll have to use the workbook and figure out the actual values of the dilution. And then we have patients to compare to. So I'm going to flip the camera so that we can compare each patient to the serial dilution. ELISAs are really cool because you don't just get positive or negative results. You also, for the positive results, uh, can figure out how positive somebody is. So what you want to do with each patient that you get is try to come up with the best color match you can. And it can be kind of tricky, but I'd say it's maybe between these two. To me, that one looks a little bit more like this. So I'm going to call patient A 31 nanograms per milliliter. If you thought it was right between the two, you could even estimate in between. So you could average 31 and 63. It's going to be somewhere around 46 would be my guess. So that's the first patient. I'm going to line it up right here behind 31 because that's what I think it matches. And then I have another one to test out. So this is patient B, clearly very dark, very infected patient, but how dark and infected? I think it's more of a match for this first tube. So I'm gonna call patient B 1,000 nanograms per milliliter, and I'm gonna put that patient right there. Patient C, paler than the last one, but maybe darker than the first one. Let's see if that's a match. Hmm. I think that's a match for 125. Those look pretty well matched to me. So patient C has a, an antigen concentration of 125 nanograms per milliliter. Here's patient D. This one's pretty infected again. Do a comparison. I think I was better at 250. This reminds me of being at the eye doctor. Which one's better? Hmm. It looks a little darker than 250 to me, but not as dark as 500. So for me, I would average those two values. Halfway between 250 and 500 is 375. And I think it's maybe in the middle here. I'm just gonna lay this one right here because I can't quite decide. And then I have patient E. Patient E looks to be infected, but the infection level is definitely lower than the other patients. I think it's less than 16 even. Ooh, there we go. Eight nanograms per milliliter. So when you are checking your own results, you want to go for the best color match and then just make sure that you have your serial dilutions correctly calculated. Make your comparison and that's how you'll know the antigen level of your patients.